Hello my soccer universe, a Bundesliga review video was long overdue, I actually thought the last time that I did one, I didn't really check, but I thought yeah this is right before the winter break and then we have two more rounds to be played and meanwhile we have five rounds played in the new year, so a total of seven rounds. And there were some times when I really wanted to, but I didn't find the time, especially since there were other two international competitions with the Asian Cup and the FCON uh, going on happening, however I clearly earmarked. Uh, that there is Leverkusen against Bayern, a huge matchup, and in the build-up, this was really uh, almost built as a title decider. No title is given out in February yet, but it's a massive result that we got with Leverkusen winning and now more or less in control of their own destiny. And I knew after that weekend, I definitely need to do a video. Little did I realize this is a weekend of me not only going to the stadium, but also that there are two other. One with two matchups, there's a Super Bowl, there are two finals, blah blah blah. So I guess we're a little bit delayed, but still. I'm putting out and I'm probably even gonna skip a Serie A review because of that, because it just gets too much otherwise. So whole lot of German football to talk about. I actually don't wanna go round by round and game by game. I just wanna pick out highlights. I wanna go through the table how I see things going. And yes, we will talk about the big one. We will talk about the big one. Uh, but that will probably be one of the few match reviews that I will do. But I want to start in the German Cup. A uh, little curveball in there. Uh, where we had three or four quarterfinals played. Uh, Saarbrücken against Gladbach. The last one needed to be postponed because there was tons of rain and the pitch was not playable. Uh, we had St. Pauli against Düsseldorf in a true cup fight with Düsseldorf winning on penalties, so one second league team. Uh, moving on, St. Pauli, I think, are current leaders in the second Bundesliga. And uh, that definitely comes as a surprise. Hertha then also, despite having hopefully once found themselves 3-0 down at home to Kaiserslautern. Kaiserslautern also a big name. Moving on. However, when you look at the matchups, Leverkusen against Stuttgart. This was 1v3 from the Bundesliga. This was already in the quarterfinal, if you like the final. And it was a great game. This was absolutely one that I knew. Whatever happens, this is one that I want to watch. Because both of these teams, some of the most exciting teams in all of Europe. And while you may see Leverkusen in Europe playing, Stuttgart you will not see. So this was really, really fun. Stuttgart held, in tw held twice the lead. Leverkusen, uh, I think through Führig and Andrich, got back into the game. And then very late on, Tar gets a winner. And it was right in the build-up to the big clash between Bayer and Bayern, as they call it in Germany, the 1v2, the one where we thought, will Bayern Munich uh, for once show up, the real Bayern Munich show up. And we're going on into the Newport's later title uh, fight. The build-up was quite in interesting because, uh, well, Leverkusen got many, many wins. To start the season, they got a very late win, 96 minutes at Augsburg. They got a very late win in a really brilliant match against Leipzig, away from home as well. Then they drew only at home to Gladbach, but had then also some uh, more, um, you know, complete results like the 2-0 against Darmstadt in there. So they were in a good run, and I think having this win against Stuttgart was definitely a morale boost. I don't want to imagine well, what we have in Stuttgart actually would have won this game, and this was in there. I think Stuttgart was well enough uh, uh, to... could have beaten Leverkusen away from home. Whereas Bayern, ooh! Yes, the last time we thought that they are really tumbling, and this was uh, the topic more or less of, of, of this video. They just had lost 5-0 to Frankfurt. And then the hosting Stuttgart, the Stuttgart team that was flying at the, at the time, and then Bayern, probably with the best performance of the season, totally outplayed Stuttgart and won easy 3-0. Uh, this was always, if there's something at stake, then Bayern will show up. And this was kind of the expectation for this game as well. Other than that, Bayern having a quite a weird start. I mean, yes, you had, we, uh, you know, there's a Franz Beckenbauer V video. He passed, passed away. So the first match day back was definitely overshadowed by that uh, in memory of Franz Beckenbauer. Uh, they got a 
win over Hoffenheim, but it was nothing great. Then they lose at home to Werder Bremen. I uh, have another home game uh, because of there was a delayed game against Union Berlin. So you get instead of nine out of uh, nine points, you get only six out of nine points with three home games to start the season. But then Bayern, without being convincing, you get a three-two away win in Augsburg, an Augsburg team that never said die in a way. Then on on the past weekend, also not convincing, three-one against Gladbach. However, Gladbach held. Leverkusen to a nil-nil draw at home, although this was a game that Leverkusen very easily should have won. Let's also say that. And so the big game, and you know, overshadowed by protests, I will mention this in a little bit as well, because it's another big story. The big game started, and the big surprise were the two um, lineups. A, Bayern, and that was probably the biggest surprise, tried to mirror the Leverkusen lineup. Going, I think, with three on the back instead of four on on the back. This was kind of first, aha, uh -huh, and Tuchel might defend it as he liked, because he, he thought this might be the best thing to um, hold of Leverkusen. However, Leverkusen voluntarily let go of a big man striker up front and relied on the on the speed. So basically, whatever Bayern tried, tried just Leverkusen also adjusted to it, and it actually worked over on Leverkusen's favor. That being said, though, is that for the first few minutes, Bayern were in control of, 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 of the game. I remember even the commentator saying after 10 minutes, Bayern bossing the game. Very, 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 very clearly. And then just out of nowhere, Andrich, and I think that was the first a half chance for Leverkusen, Andrich is free on the wing after a corner and just decides to yank it across the box. I don't even know if he wanted to uh, shoot or, or whatever. And he goes past all the Bayern defense. And then where, who's there? Stanisic, on loan from Bayern, completely unmarked, puts it in the net. 1-0. And at that point then, the game started to turn. Big time. Then Bayern well, outplayed large, large, large by Leverkusen, who could have scored more in the first half. They get the second goal right at the, end, at, at, at the beginning of the second. Um, through Grimaldo, a brilliant shot. And then tries, they might, I think, um, with a little bit of better fin finishing, this could have gotten really ugly. I mean, it got ugly for Bayern. Uh, <laughs> relations that very late on, you could uh, concede an empty net goal to make it 3-0. But this was really, really comprehensive what uh, Bayern Leverkusen showed. And they're not title favorites, you saw it on there, they are 62%, it was before that match, it was the other way around, so now it has completely flipped into Bayer's, or Leverkusen, let's say Leverkusen's favor. Uh, will they bring it home? That is the question. Now, I think they're about to match the longest unbeaten streak in, um, in competitive games in German football. Uh, held by Bayern Munich, I think with the, if they win the next round, or, or they don't lose the next round, or maybe they even just need to in Europe not lose, but I think they are first, so they are not playing in Europe this weekend. So the next round, then they have equal that record. And who was the last team to beat Leverkusen? Let you guess for a sec. Ais Roma. Mourinho's Ais Roma in the semifinals of, of, of the Europa League last year. So just putting it out there. This is a really, really good team. And you could see it after the match that this is a team. Xavi Alonso has created a team. I mean, uh, they were all celebrating far in front of fan block. A lot of costumes there as well. Um, and then uh, the fans were uh, chanting Xavi Alonso to get him to uh, greet them. And he went, but he also took his entire coaching stuff and then the entire team were celebrating, bringing together. Uh, it also has to be said, Victor Boniface, uh, their best striker in the fall, is out due to an in in injury. But yeah, they got Borja Iglesias and they have plenty of options. Chic up front. I uh, actually I think this is a very well constructed team, totally in the face of their coach. And they're an amazing sight to behold. That definitely has to be said. So yeah, that's the big story coming out of Germany over the last few weeks that uh, Bayern really not looking good and Thomas Müller then kind of echoed what he what um, Thomas Tuchel has been saying that in training they look all amazing and then come match they're completely missing guts or other body parts that he mentioned uh, male anatomy uh, they're absolutely missing and this is uh, this might be the storm 
that will unleash fire, but they have not an uphill battle. But uh, I, d I don't know how Leverkusen will behave once the target is back on them. The other big story, and this is not on the pitch stuff, was definitely the protests. Uh, there is the DFL and it was a very, very tight vote with, I think, the president of Hanover going against his board. So they got the necessarily, necessary votes that an investor will be given some, uh, will pump some money into the Bundesliga, I think, in return for some TV rights and so on. And the, fam the fans in Germany, who are very much grassroots level, do not like that one bit. They fear that this will completely um, destroy their idea of how football will be played. And this is a major, major story in Germany, as opposed to other leagues, like League 1, I think, did something similar. don't think that many uh, mind it as much. Um, the protests, yes, it's through. The protests uh, were first just, you know, with signs and, and so on. And I think last the previous week, weekend at Hertha, uh, tennis balls were thrown on the pitch. And this was mirrored now all over the Bundesliga. For, Lever for the Leverkusen game, there were no tennis balls because they knew there are goal nets behind the goal. Uh, and the tennis balls will not fit through there. So they just threw candy and there was a big eyeball there as well. Um, let me say it that way. Um, in order to remain competitive for the Bundesliga in the European picture, I think this is a necessary step. I understand why it is not liked and I understand, you know, investor, there will be some money back. It's a little bit of a risky move as well. I also understand this is not exactly how you ideally want to build it. This is maybe too much more more the world for the common fan. I think I can sim sympathize with that. Um, however, when I see where the German Bundesliga is in relation to the other big leagues, I mean, you're clearly third uh, place, if not fourth place. I think Serie A is just slightly ahead of the, of, of, the, of the Bundesliga. And with the Bayern dominance, that, 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 that doesn't help. On the other side, you have now some really exciting teams it is the money that will come in is only meant for infrastructure projects and and, and 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 so on and maybe this is something yeah we have to see how this pans out i think the deal is going through i'm pretty sure about that uh despite all the protests but the protests will be continuing and you know german fans are rather vocal uh, a few other things that I want to point out. Stuttgart actually had a pretty bad start to the year, losing three, uh, two games, one at Gladbach uh, and one even at Bochum, but now have found their way again with a brilliant 5-2 over Leipzig, then uh, winning the derby away to Freiburg. A Freiburg team that's a little bit in free fall as well, three uh, losses now in, in a row, and then a uh, win against Mainz. So uh, Stuttgart back relatively safely in a third place together with Dortmund who also had a pretty good start to the new year uh, with four wins out of five um, and you know you have Jaden Sanchez it's sometimes it's clicking but then you have a game like the away game to Heidenheim where you, this was the old Borussia Dortmund I think it will be enough for a top four finish for Dortmund I actually think a Stuttgart although they are the way more exciting team they're also maybe not as stable enough but I would wish that it's Stuttgart Leipzig I think Rose is under huge huge pressure I mean losing first at home to Frankfurt then to Leverkusen I think Leverkusen you can do um, but you know three in a row that's not looking good that's absolutely not low, low looking good and now even the 2-2 two -two draw against uh, Augsburg, yeah, um, let's see, Frankfurt is a team that I think has the talent to challenge and we thought they can beat Bayern 5-0, but they are, they are missing cons consistent in Freiburg, I think now playing Europe again is really catching up we, we, with them, Hoffenheim is also kind of middling, uh, pretty sensation I think it has to be said is Heidenheim, they got a 2-1 win at Werder Bremen, a Werder Bremen team that had a really good start to the season, uh, yes they lost now at home to Heidenheim, but they had three wins in a row and one of them was in Munich at Bayern, and so at this moment Bremen look rather safe, as do honestly almost all the teams that are from 15 upward because the gap to Köln is already quite sizable. Despite Köln having lately, I mean they have not lost three in a row, they beat Frankfurt at home, they drew at Wolfsburg, um, yes yeah, the team that, that's down there but they also drew at Hoffenheim which is a little bit higher so uh, under the new management and I really found it tough that they let the coach go, Stefan Baumgart. Baum, Baum, Baum 
but I think they are t playing a similar brand of football. Uh, so yeah, Mainz and Darmstadt, those two teams seem to be the worst in the Bundesliga. Mainz fired the coach, uh, now losing to Stuttgart. I honestly don't think Mainz is a Ghana and Darmstadt as well, although we know there has been escape artists uh, from Mainz just a few years ago. Uh, Union Berlin, I think, under coach Nena Be Bielica, um, although I don't know for how long he, he, he got banned after the little fight that he picked with Lyra in Munich, uh, actually seemed to be kind of getting it going again. And you know, six wins. Already, uh, that's more than almost any other team uh, that's are, are together there. It's just us have picked up more draws and Union have been losing a little bit more. So this is the general C situation, the general picture in Germany. Again, um, if you want to hear more about the current uh, round and, and so on, I will gladly refer you to my uh, one minute videos. Uh, just talking about the past round, there were a whole lot of draws. I mean. Uh, we started out with Dortmund getting actually quite a big win uh, at Freiburg, Lo looking good there. Then that, uh, we had the draws in the afternoon, Augsburg, Leipzig 2-2, Gladbach, Knapstadt 1-0, Frankfurt only 1-1 against Bochum, really showing that it is not so great what Frankfurt is showing. They can be really good, they can be really bad, that the consistency is missing. Uh, and the consistency has been really missing for Frankfurt for quite a while because I think talent wise is a squad that could definitely play up there. Only in Berlin, that game was to the protest almost about to get abandoned, but uh, it gets played. It's a 1 0 at Wolfsburg, and that is actually the win that I think gives Union, a, despite being still in 15th, uh, a little bit of cushion, a little bit of. Um, Calm, I, I, I would say, especially since Kern could only play a 1 1 Hoffheim, which is not a bad, bad result. But you know, you have the five point cushion that seems already quite good. Uh, we had uh, Heidenheim winning at Bremen. We talked about the big win for Leverkusen and Stuttgart also. I mean, uh, Mainz was in the game, but in the end, Stuttgart are just a better team. And yeah, I really would hope that Stuttgart qualifies for the Champions League question is how will they deal with that because at the moment they don't have European commitments. So in any case please let me know what you think about all the things in the German Bundesliga. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and I will talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.